first thing that YouTube hears is me cracking a cold one. Let's just extend the microphone. Cue this thing up. I'll start in just a second. So, where to start? I guess for background, what did my first aid kit look like? Well, this is the leftover of it. Let me just uh, knock that out. So, I used to use this old Stanley um, organizer, and I've taken most of the supplies out. Um, it actually came with um, dividers in the middle here which I since dremeled out and replaced with just a laser cut piece of acrylic just to keep this portion flat. Um, and this did the job of just traveling with me in the car, going to events, camping, whatever. Um, it's banged up. I mean, the lid's starting to crack. It's kind of hard to see, but it is. It's a little tired. So I figure it is time to rebuild the first aid kit. So where to start? Well, I got a pile of parts here that are nice, and we'll see where we go from there. That's a little bright. Actually, see if I can get a little wider here. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Just get that focus. Eh, no. Eh, that's finicky. Alright, good enough. <clears throat> so, where to start? Um, well, I decided I wanted a hard case. So, I decided to go for... Um, instead of a Pelican case this time, I wanted something different. Partially to buy Canadian. Um, also, because I wanted something that wasn't a Pelican case. I've got a ton of Pelican cases for camera gear, video equipment, and other um, tools, but I finally decided to try out an Anuk case. Uh, I recently bought a video transmitter receiver pair, um, the Hollyland Cosmo 600, I think, and it comes in a case with nicer, uh, easy release latches like this. So instead of having to pry with all your force and cracking fingernails and stuff, I figure you know, latches that are easy open are uh, an initial check mark. Um, I also wanted to try and get something that was brightly colored, so that limited my options, mainly because I mostly buy Pelican cases used. They retain their resale value, and most people go for, you know, the bog standard black. Uh, I wanted like a red or an orange, something that was high visibility so that, you know, I always know where it is, and I'm eventually going to get like a vinyl cut sticker for the front um, once I actually can go back to my local makerspace and uh, get it laser cut. Or not laser cut, um, vinyl cutting machine cut. <clears throat> so, what's going to go into this? Well, in the past intervening six years, uh, not only have I taken on more 
uh, outdoor hobbies like airsoft. Um, I've also kind of upskilled in terms of first aid, so uh, I, I've decided, okay, I'm going to pack it full of uh, a whole bunch of useful items. Oops. Instead of knocking the whole camera rig out of alignment. Alright, so let's just take that one out. So what do we got? I mean, at a minimum I'm going to want like a um, CPR. Well, okay, taking a step back. What do I want this kit to actually fulfill? In terms of capabilities, this is the kit that I take if I'm going to go, you know, out to a, a job site or a film set or, you know, anywhere where first aid is not readily available. I'm not going to trust that someone else is going to have it. I'm going to rely on myself. And if incidentally I can provide for others, that's, you know, a bonus. It's a good Samaritan thing, especially in Canada. Um... So I, I decided, okay, I want to be able to handle um, trauma in terms of like blood loss from a power tool accident, circular saw, chainsaw, uh, stuff like that. Um, I want to be able to handle stuff like um, unconscious um, situations where you know someone's taking an electrical shock or something from a poorly grounded piece of equipment. Um, but I also want to be able to, say, go to the gun range with friends and, you know, God forbid something bad happens and there's a negligent discharge uh, with their firearm, I want to be able to try and deal with that. Um, so I've, I've kind of been carrying an everyday uh, first aid kit, more like a um, trauma kit that's just got um, a Sealox uh, hemostatic gauze, chest seals, tourniquet. Um, the, oh god, that's a lot of blood kit. That's not what this is for. This is the, you know, I know I'm going to be working with power tools, and if something goes wrong, hey everyone, it's this big orange case. That's where everything is. So, different purpose in mind, and also just kind of a general, you know, hey, my car's stuck in the ditch um, on a, you know, a white elk blizzard day. Um, I'm going to stock up a couple extra things, such as um, an emergency uh, foil blanket, things like that. Heat packs, like those oxygen-activated heat packs um, to, to fight off hypothermia. Plus, having the blanket and having the uh, heat packs are a great way to deal with uh, patient hypothermia and shock. So, then I realized this thing is far too crammed full of things already, and... Um, I'm not going to be able to find anything. You look at this and it's just crammed full of stuff. Um, I went down the route of a hard case uh, because I was watching either Prep Medic or Skinny Medic on YouTube. Both great channels. Um, totally recommend you watch them to learn some stuff. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, uh, just your standard things like gauzes, uh, non-adhered dressings, um, CPR mask with a one-way valve and filter. Um, always a good thing to have. Um, gonna just have a, a short two-inch um, compressive bandage wrap uh, just to help hold things together if you need to. Roller gauze, um, easy, useful. Two triangular bandages. Uh, these were in my old kit and they're coming into my new kit. Why? They're always useful. You can use them as a burn dressing, you can use them for a sling, you can use them for almost anything. They're useful. A um, couple glow sticks because you never know if you need a little light. Um, and to that note, uh, I'm going to try and find room in this case for this ever so cheap $9 off of Amazon Prime because I think it's last year's model. It even came with batteries, um, headlamp. It's uh, decently bright, it's got two settings, a high and a low, camera doesn't show it too great, but um, yeah, I'm probably going to put some lithium batteries in here so it'll last a long time on the shelf, because you don't want alkaline batteries leaking in your emergency kit. Um, I got some other things that I'm going to go into later. Uh, Boo Boo Kit, also known as Bitch Stickers. Um, little band-aids, butterfly closures, um, you know, uh, butterfly bandages for knuckles, things like that. Uh, this is probably going to be one of the more common things to go into, so it's going to stay near the top. You know, oops, I cut myself with a knife. It's not deep, but 
I still gotta deal with that kind of situations. <clears throat> Moleskin. Moleskin is this lovely, great stuff. Uh, mole as in the animal, skin as in skin. It's like an adherent fabric um, cloth. If you have, say, poorly fitted boots and you get a pressure blister starting to form on the heel of your foot and you still have 10, 15, 20 kilometers to hike, say it got so bad on your hike into a camp, you said, screw this, this isn't working, I've got to, we've got to call it, um, you still have to hike out and it's only going to get worse. So you take your sock off and you, you know, wipe it down with some alcohol pad just to get any sweat and dirt off. And you cut a little section of this out and slap it on. And this takes the rubbing and friction and wear away. And the mole skin just basically acts like an abrasive sacrificial surface for your skin. Always useful. Um, <clears throat> some uh, more non-adherent dressings. Uh, and abdominal pads. Why? Because they're always useful for um, absorbing blood if, um, say, you cut yourself with an axe or a hatchet or a knife while trying to break up firewood. Um, duct tape. So I'm kind of conflicted about putting duct tape in my kit, but I decided this time around to actually put some duct tape in my kit. Uh, instead of carrying a big honking roll with all that void, empty space in the middle, um, I decided I'm going to take a portion off, and I don't even know how much this is, but um, I just wound this onto a piece of quarter-inch uh, nylon or polyethylene uh, pneumatic airline. And uh, I dog-eared the corners here. Should be able to see on camera. Yeah, I folded the corners over. You can see those 45-degree angles. Uh, just to make it easy to, you know, get in there. In any sort of uh, an emergency situation, your dexterity is going to go to nil. So the easier you can make it, the better. <clears throat> um, breathable plastic uh, medical tape, um, povidone iodine swabs, uh, and some additional cotton swabs, <clears throat> just for the utility of being able to, you know, really clean up uh, a wound if you needed to. Um, mainly because this other packet um, I've got I've got alcohol swabs right your bog standard alcohol swabs and also these antiseptic towelettes the antiseptic towelettes are great for skin prep um, but they only deal with so much they're um, quaternary amine so they're great for killing bacteria but I don't think they're that good for viruses um, <clears throat> or other things like parasites so much. So in a kind of like wilderness environment where there's like bugs and dirt or say lake water, um, and, and say you got to cut on a rock or something, you're going to want to, if you really need to clean a little deeper and you got to deal with it, you got to deal with it. Um, some loose band-aids because I guess I didn't have my shit together when I started this video. Uh, and a random sticker in the bottom of this case that can go away now. <clears throat> um, a little pouch of miscellaneous uh, sharps and tools. Um, straight razor blades. Useful for anything. Not just first aid, um, but say to, you know, cut a, a piece of paracord or, um, you know, take slivers out. Whatever you need, this can do it. <clears throat> so you've got like bee stings and you gotta get something really thin and sharp. A um, uh, little pair of tweezers with a uh, magnifying lens on the end of them just to make it easy to examine whatever you're trying to tweeze. These are nice for splitters. Um, other sets of tweezers, um, small scissors, things like that put it in a pouch just so that the sharp stuff here doesn't penetrate or poke any of the packaging here. Um, and a bog standard uh, Israeli bandage. Why? Because, you know, sometimes there might be a, a worse injury. You know, say you fall and end up skewering your arm or something on a tree branch. You're gonna want to be able to ap apply a lot of pressure and 
this little two inch um, roller bandage won't be able to apply enough pressure to control the bleeding. Um, so this is more of the, that's a lot of blood. Um, I may still add a couple other things to this, like an actual tourniquet, but again, the use case for this is kind of more on the um, outdoor uh, camping adventure side. So I, I don't know if a tourniquet really belongs in here. Um, so I have this thing fully empty now. It was packed full to the brim. And one of the things I want to do is shrink down the volume of some of these objects. Um, one of the things that I did was I actually started vacuum sealing um, some of my uh, spare first aid supplies. So you'll see there's um, three abdominal pads here, standard 5x9. There's two abdominal pads in here, standard 5x9. Um, you can fold over these edges and make this thing very compact and flat relatively speaking you know you can save a lot of weight now there are some non-adherent dressings in here but I, I think it still illustrates that there's a lot of air volume that you can evacuate by just vacuum sealing so that's something I'm gonna go into and and try and clean up some of these items um, I did get um, these I think it's a hundred pack of these bags off of Amazon um, they come with a zipper, and they're heat sealed on this end with little tear notches, and then the other end is actually open. So you can put your items in here, heat, vacuum seal it, and trim off the excess, and then you get a really nice tight package. Why are they Ziploc bags? Well, I used to do this with regular vacuum bagging material, and I found um, that you would end up, say, um, having to open a pack of gauze pads or something. And then you would have nowhere to put them. So I would put an extra Ziploc sandwich bag like these guys in this um, little vacuum package. Just so you'd have something to put them in to protect them from dirt and water and, and uh, from getting worse. I mean, you open it, uh, it's not going to be sterile, but at the very least you can keep it from getting wet or dirty um, and minimize any other chance of infection because ultimately if you're in a bad situation you're going to use what you have um, no matter what. So uh, yeah, one of the goals for tonight is to slim down on weight. One of the other goals is to organize because you saw everything was just jam-packed in here and it's going to be difficult to find what you need. Um, one of the ideas and concepts that I came up with was like uh, pelican cases and other hard cases, lid organizers can work. So I am going to attempt to um, use adhesive Velcro strips to secure this um, Velcro panel. This is a Maxpedition, is it Maxpedition Elite? No, I'm trying to, gotta, I gotta look it up. Ah, okay, it's Maxpedition what the hell was that? Huh. Uh, Maxpedition Entity uh, hook and loop panel. Maxpedition makes a bunch of these um, panels where they've got like elastic straps or mesh pouches and zippers. Um, they're elastic and the elastic's pretty tough because it's intended to last for a long time. Um, in this case, I want to be able to put gloves and other um, critical items right in the lid so that when you open this, it's right there. Um, and I'm probably gonna put like a big um, like neon label or something, gloves, trauma shears, everything else up here, just to help draw the attention here. Because it may not be me using this kit on someone else, it could be someone using it on me, right? Um, so I mean, just being able to get to the trauma shears, these are just, um, you know, kind of $5 relatively cheap trauma shears, um, but they work. You know, it's not like I'm a uh, professional medical day in, day out. So, you know, not the best trauma shears in the world. I can live with that.
All right, so I guess we're going to start with this, and plastic, um, plastic cases, when they're molded, they usually use a release agent, um, and even if not, they can kind of get dirty on the shelf, so I'm just going to give this a good wipe down with an alcohol pad, uh, not an alcohol pad, an alcohol cleaning wipe, this is actually a pretty good one, it's quite juicy. Uh, in terms of isopropyl alcohol and apparently I've got a little cut here because it's starting to sting. Murphy's Law, especially on camera too. Um, as for Nanook cases, because a friend of mine was asking, uh, especially while I'm waiting for this to dry, um, just for my sense about Nanook, they're a Canadian company and um, I guess they're offering is kind of a disruptive product for the uh, market. Um, I found that these cases are just as strong as a Pelican case, but they have some nicer features. Um, so as long as you're not, you know, airdropping your equipment into, you know, the gates of hell, and a nuke case will do just as good as a Pelican case. You don't get that brand clout, but it's just fine because you're not um, you're not counting on, you know, a $60,000 UAV drone to make it to, you know, Afghanistan after being airdropped or whatever, being blown up with um, IEDs and, and still come out perfectly fine. Um, there have been stories of stuff in Pelican cases that have survived drowning, that have survived car fires, and then drowning from, like, uh, the fire response and then while the, the case is fused shut and, you know, they've had the Dremel and angle grinder their way back into the case, the contents are perfectly fine. Um, so, I mean, Pelican cases are great, don't get me wrong. Um, but a new case will get you 80 to 90 percent of the way there for 50 to 60 percent of the dollar cost. Um, so, I think a new case would do great for anyone that just wants to get into... Uh, packaging up their stuff nicer. I'm just trying to think of how I want to do this, whether I want to do like two strips or three strips. I'm thinking like three strips. Either that or I'm going to put like four equally spaced strips on the lid just to give myself all the flexibility in the world. Yeah, I might do four, because then I can reposition items and put them wherever I want. Because I'm not just thinking in the short term, I'm thinking in the long term. Say I, I change out this case for another um, item, and I want to be able to reuse this for something else. Having Velcro in the lid, always a useful thing. Um, yeah, so I guess we'll just kind of start putting Velcro down. Now that we're uh, wiped clean with alcohol, and it's all dry. Normally, if this was a cheap project or something not too critical, I wouldn't splurge on the Velcro brand Velcro. Um, but I decided because I'm building this kit to last another 10 years, because I'm building this kit to just work. I'm counting on this kit to not fail me when I need it the most. Um, I'd rather not have like the adhesive turn to goo and get all over the contents of the case. Um, I'd rather have everything just be rock solid bulletproof so I'm willing to spend a little more money now than uh, cheap out and find out later that was a bad idea. Because I've been there before. You know, um, work with what you can afford and what you can get. This is me being a bit of a nerd as well because I like to customize my tools, my gear, my storage. Um, maybe one day I'll film a video about my uh, 511 Tactical cams bag. No, sorry, Psalms, Psalms bag, some of my stuff. Um, they make these great bags that are good for organizing things, have Molly uh, panels on the inside. Um, 
loop side velcro on all the walls so you can put organizer panels like this one uh, on the walls to organize stuff. I think once this is also done, I'm going to film kind of a summary video to show what this kit comprises of. But um, I figure if you're watching this video, you're more for the uh, you're more along for the ride and to learn all the little bits about it, and not just see the finished result. everywhere. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, that ain't going anywhere. That is beautiful. I'm gonna scooch that over all the way to the side. I mean, I could almost like do up a little Velcro strap or something to keep the headlamp here so that you could yeah, it kind of makes me wonder, can I do something custom for the headlamp so like the headlamp could, or I could just like, <laughs> in a situation, just have the headlamp dangling here, turn the light on, and now the inside of this case is lit. Um, so yeah, this is another neat trick too, if you, if you don't know about it. <laughs> um, okay, uh, you'll notice that I don't have gloves in here just because I need to replace them anyways. Um, a lot of medical stuff will last. Gloves are one of those things where um, I'd rather replace it and chuck out the ones that have been sitting in the kit for five or six years. Really what I should be doing is replacing them more often, but um, again, like I've only needed to go into that first aid kit so many times. <clears throat> um, Alright, items that aren't going to compress. I'm going to get back in here and get out of the way so I can work on uh, vacuum bagging stuff. So. Stuff like band-aids, I'm going to go into frequently enough, I don't want to seal those. Moleskin, same thing, uh, those band-aids I'll clean up. Povidone iodine, um, I probably want to vacuum seal, if only to keep, uh, like say if the foil packaging on this gets compromised, I don't want it leaking everywhere, I've already had one kind of leak, um, can't really see the residue, but it's there. Um, so I'm going to leave this out. Alcohol swabs I'm going to leave in because those aren't going to compact down. Glow sticks aren't really going to compact down. Um, I'm still kind of divided on this, whether it's really necessary, but I think for my application it might be advantageous, so I'm going to keep, say, like, one up here in the lid, and maybe one down here. Um, roller bandage and the gauze definitely will compress down. So will the sponges and the non-adherent dressings. Um, the Israeli bandage is already vacuum sealed. So I'm just going to not reinvent the freaking wheel there. And I'm going to put this aside. Because it is time to vacuum seal. Um, wherever I put my vacuum sealer. I had one around here earlier. Ah, there it is. Alright, cool. Vacuum sealer is up. Alright, so how do I want to do this? Um. Well, I mean, I've already demonstrated just how much volume can shrink down, but why don't I repeat the process on camera this time? So there are three, is it three? No, two um, abdominal pads. So I've got two here, I'm going to make another identical package. Um, I have these, I think they're 5x9 um, 
no, sorry, they're six by ten bags in a fifty pack. Um, they're basically fifty cents a piece, but you know, yes, it's a premium. Does it bother me? No, because again, I'm intending for this kit to last me a long time. I've got medical supplies from five, ten years ago that's still vacuum bagged, hasn't uh, taken any leaks, so at least I know everything in there is still fine. Um, you know, obviously anything that's like a, a chemical or a liquid like the povidone iodine, I'm gonna maybe swap out. Alright, so my methodology to this, and I'm not an expert, um, I like to try and keep the labeling visible on both sides because you grab this, you're, you know, someone's hurt, your friend's hurt, what do you do? Especially if you're not familiar with this kit. The last thing you want to do is have to flip this over. Um, I did make a goof when I made my test run, uh, and I only made it single-sided, so, oops, you know, oh shoot, my friend's hurt, what is this? It's a square thing, what is it? Is it, you know, Z-folded gauze? No, it's non-woven sponges, mm, that's not so important for me. Um, abdominal pads, this is what I want, right? If I pick it up from either side, I know it's here. Um, tear strip, rip it open, open the zipper, get two of them out. Um, alright, so I like to fold these up in such a way that uh, the labels are facing out. And I mean, the contents spring back as well after um, you reopen. Certain items you won't want to fold up, but, you know, let's just take a look at this. The packaging here is uh, about three centimeters by six centimeters. So it's three centimeters, um, three centimeters thick. We're going to take it down to one centimeter thick, maybe, um, at its thickest. So I folded these up in such a way that they'll compact down nicely. And we're just going to slip these in, just like that. Easy peasy. So at this point you want to make sure that this zipper remains closed before you seal it. It is heat sealed on this end, but you don't want the zipper to pop open and cause headaches later. Um, You'll note this is too big to fit in the channel, so I'm actually going to have to trim this down. Always leave plenty of excess to play around with. You can always trim it later. And always go back and heat seal tighter to the packaging and um, reseal extra. Uh, extra heat seals. Alright, so I think at this point we're gonna close this down, start the vacuum. And it's not gonna pull very much vacuum until I actually push down on this. And I'm just gonna help kinda keep it flat. The heat sealer's already going. I didn't do as good a job on this one, um, cause some of this is a little crimped. But it should be fine. All right. Sealer's done. It's heat sealed. It's not taking on any more air. I am, however, going to put one or two more heat seals a little tighter into the packaging. Just wait for that to finish. Just line this up for another heat seal. And just like that, I've put four abdominal pads into the space of maybe two. Um, definitely a great way to package up this kind of stuff. Especially, say, if you're going to, like, canoe or portage inland. The last thing you want to have happen is, you know, you get a bit of water or it's raining. You, you know, you have to open your first aid kit and water gets in there and it sits in there, too. Um, you don't want it ruining your other supplies when you might need them. 
Okay, that's good. I'm just gonna trim off the excess and we'll be good. Easy peasy. Alright, so that's some um, abdominal pads. Let's look, look, look at um, non adherent dressings. The nice bit is because these come in Ziploc bags, um, you can reseal them uh, on site. You don't need to carry around the extra Ziploc bags. Um, you know, in fact, just to make it efficient use of space, I'm going to put all of these compressed pads um, in as well, just because I've got the room, I've got the space, might as well. Now, this one's going to be a bit trickier because I've got two sizes of materials, and I don't think I'm going to be able to double-side this. Um, but what I can do is, you can see non-woven on one side, non-adherent on the other. What we're going to do is load these materials in. This package has a lot of, um, you know, ability to adapt to different needs. So I'm pretty pleased with just being able to get all of these items in. So pre-shrink size, it's maybe an inch and a half thick, right? Ton of wasted space. So we can do something about that. In this case, I don't even need to uh, trim that down. I'm going to do it this way so I can actually see the contents and help smooth it out as we go. Need to not shift it. Alright. So, trying to keep this as flat as possible. Thank you, Mom. That is a perfect package. very tight, perfectly sealed. Let's put a couple more seals on this though. Oh, while I'm waiting for that, I might as well have a drink. <sighs> Gotta love Friday night, eh? Yeah, we'll have our heat seal for good measure. And I mean, in my situation, this first aid kit won't be complete. It'll always be evolving. Um, I'm probably still going to pick up a couple items. Um, some items that aren't available right now or aren't on camera right now are things like that um, insulated blanket, sort of that um, emergency foil blanket. Um, hand warmer heat packs to throw in there as well for a shock. Um, you know, just a little thing here and there, polysporin. Um, depending on if I'm going with, uh, say, a friend that's diabetic, I'm going to carry glucose gel, right? Adapt to the situation uh, that you know you're going into, if you know you're going into. So I've got maybe 12 to 20 gauze sponge pads and a bunch of non-adherent dressings. So that's cool. 
Let's look at these triangular bandages. Non-sterile, so I don't need to worry so much about going into the packaging. You'll notice that at this point I haven't actually opened any of the non-sterile, pa or sorry, any of the sterile packaging that you saw earlier. Um, in this case, this one's already non-sterile, so I'm not going to worry so much about opening it up. Um, I am, however, going to try and make this package as tight as possible, one per. Um, well, I might put two, just to get more out of it. I mean, they're already fairly tight, so I don't know how much I'm going to be able to compress, but if I have two packages, it gives me more flexibility to, um, you know, repack and reorganize, so I'm still a little divided. Um, I'm probably going to leave the original um, uh, plastic wrapper. It's already got the tear notch in there, and um, I don't want these pins poking through this material, so... Yeah, I'm a little divided. I might um, just put a little notch in here just to let the air out and see how this vacuum seals. This may go well, this may go terribly. This is uncharted territory and an experiment all at the same time. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna trim that back to like there. feels a little wasteful to use these vacuum bags and throw out the plastic, but, um, you know, say if I'm throwing out this much, I can probably make another vacuum sealed package from this, but like for a sliver of material. So I don't know how useful this would actually be, because it's one more thing to have to tear strip open. Um, yeah. Alright. So it's about a centimeter, centimeter and a half thick. Let's see what I can do about it. Uh, I've gotten a little bit of air out, but not a huge amount of air out. I don't feel too good about it. At the same time better than a loose package like this, because I can still fold this in. I can still fold it in nice and tight, and that does save a, a fair amount of space. is done. Before and after, it de definitely does feel thinner, um, and it feels a lot sturdier in terms of the uh, packaging. Like, I'm not going to hesitate to fold it nice and tight. I've maybe gained a little bit of width But now I know this is absolutely waterproof and rigid. It's definitely going to be some good savings on these guys, so it'll it'll be an interesting experiment. I'm probably going to seal both of these together. Um, yeah, so let's repeat that process.
slightly better vacuum on that one. It feels a bit tighter. more than necessary to do so many seals. A couple minutes now might save a bit of headache in the future, so why not? Alright. It's another uh, triangular bandage, all nice and tight sealed up. So that roller bandage, or that roller gauze wasn't advertised as sterile, well this one's already cracked open. Um, I'm going to leave this outer packaging on because, you know, roller gauze and a roller bandage aren't going to be the first things. If you are in a total rush to stop a large bleed, say your friend tripped and fell and cut their arm open on a rock and there's blood everywhere, you're not going for this first. so. The extra layer of packaging isn't going to be, you know, the end of the world. If, um, if speed is of the essence, you would of course pre-stage everything as much as you can. Um, but in this case, I don't believe that's really necessary, and it just kind of adds to the potential for this to explode in the packaging, so to say. shaped. Might have to do this in a couple stages. All right, let's hope this works. Because dimensionally this is like almost two by two inches. sealing correctly. So I hit cancel on that midway through, just so I get a bit of extra time to uh, smooth out the packaging here. Because this is very awkwardly shaped and there's a lot of pinch points. Alright, let's uh, finish this off. No? I guess I've vacuum sealed too much. Hmm. Can I like release a bit of vacuum? Yeah, it's not the best, but I'll take it. I mean, the roller gauze is flat as a pancake. The roller bandage is uh, considerably more girthy. Can I say that on YouTube? Girthy?
wrong button. Yeah, it's not too bad. I'll I'll take it. I mean, ultimately this is about space savings. So, goal achieved. Yes, it's not pretty. I wouldn't sell this as a product, but you know, that, that's a lot smaller than what the original package was. Alright, and I think we're down to the last item here for um, space savings. I've got swab sticks. I've got one big three pack of uh, swab sticks. This packaging feels a little old and tired. Hmm. Still feels pretty, uh, good and saturated on the inside. And I've got three little packets of the povidone iodine ointment as well. So uh, I'm just going to put all of these in here and see how it seals up. I guess the real shame is if I put it in this way I've got to fold it, which might make the packaging a bit more Compromised. Hmm. No, this is the other package that leaks. There's a bit of residue. Camera can't catch it, but it's there. Yeah, these all still feel fine. This will be a first vacuum sealing liquid pouches. There's not a lot of volume here, I'm mostly just trying to anticipate one of these bursting and uh, getting iodine ointment all over everything. Because, you know, that's terrible. It actually really would be. That's certainly an interesting feeling. It's like bulging on the inside. I hope these don't rupture. Yeah, there's a small amount of air that's now, like, expanded out. Yeah, I don't feel so good about that. Uh, no, that's alright. Yeah, I think it's fine. These swab sticks, um, they're useful. I will probably just leave them out. I think 
puts everything that needs to be sealed up. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so let me just pack this away. These can stay near the top. CPR mask in the bottom. And all the soft, squishy stuff around it, I guess. Yeah. A couple triangular bandages. Bigger modules I might have to put in the bottom. Yeah, because it's not level. I guess I do that. I guess I could do that. I guess. leave the other glow stick out. Put those in. Swab sticks can go down on the side or something. This is going to be pretty packed. Um, in terms of organization, it's not the best, but I'm more concerned about packing items than uh, trying to get it organized super efficiently. And also packing this in such a way that if I open this in 10 years, I know everything is going to be just fine. Yeah, okay, so the bandages and non-essential stuff. I guess not non-essential, the non-emergency stuff up at the top. I'm probably going to add a couple more things, including nitrile gloves, which are a little hard to get a hold of in this pandemic. Um, headlamp, useful. Um, honestly, I don't even know if I really need this extra module of... Um, abdominal pads because it is more space for not a lot of extra capability. I mean, it's like duplicated. Do I really need it? No. I got non adherent dressings and sponge gauze pads. So, do I really need the second one? No, these were just tests. Might be able to squeeze that other um, glow stick in.
Hmm. I guess what I can do is wrap this strap up behind it and just package it like that. Alright, well I got a whole shed load of items in here, and that should cover almost every situation that I'm practically going to encounter while camping or going airsofting or anything else like that. This is meant for the car, not for putting in a backpack or anything, but you know, I think it fits the job. Just gotta add some gloves and uh, away we go. I got my lid organizer with one glow stick, a uh, set of emergency shears, which I might put some brighter tape or markings around just so it's easy to see uh, in the dark. And uh, I'll just have to tuck in some sets of gloves here, or maybe add one more Velcro pouch element over here just to seal the deal. Yeah, I think mission accomplished. <laughs> and it closes without even any difficulty. There's there's still room to spare. I can still put more things in. Uh, I think that's it for tonight, though. Um, mission accomplished. I wanted to pack everything in here. Everything got packed in. I can even save the scrap bag cuttings for other heat sealing shenanigans in the future. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So I guess I might film another video once this is fully complete, just so I can show what I've crammed into a small Nanook 909 case. Um, but this feels pretty capable. So have a good one.